And we're live. Hey, hey guys, thanks for tuning in to a new interview video. Uh, today we have Chris Fawcett sitting right next to me, uh, the writer of Rad Plastic. Um, the book that I already got, I uh, just ordered it on the website it used to be on, but you quickly sold out of everything, right? Yeah, sold out <laughs> about eight weeks, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many copies went around the world? Uh, well, I ordered 1,200, about probably 100 of those went as thank you gifts to like some of the, you know, designers and artists and stuff that contributed to the book. But I, yeah, sold over a thousand of them that quickly. So it was really, okay. really good. I was really happy with that. Yeah. Cause it's not like your typical, uh, Ninja Turtle, uh, action figure book. It's, it's about the process of, of how everything got made and, uh, just loads of prototypes, loads of unproduced stuff. Uh, gets unraveled in here. Um, how would you, um, how, how would you explain this to people that haven't heard about it? Uh, it's it's really uh, art and history book is what I've been calling it. So I go into the history of the line from the very beginnings of, uh, you know, not really the comic book stuff because that has been told a lot. But once Playmates got a hold of it, what did they do from there to develop it and change it? And the cartoon uh, helped play into that, and and all through the process of how toys were made back then. Um, and that's where it really starts to get into the artistry. You know, it's 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 like pop culture art. It really is. It's, you know, it's not something that is maybe made to be put on your wall. It's a beginning stage to an end of a toy. But when you look at it, like these sculptors are amazing sculptors, and the painters that paint the packaging are amazing painters. And so it really is artwork. So I really do like uh, thinking of it like an art book. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been flipping through it. And like every couple of weeks, I'll open up it up again, and I'll see new stuff that that just hasn't registered yet. It's packed. It's like four hundred pages uh, of just every year gets represented. Like every year, the toy line has been active, and even beyond that, there's there's some new stuff in there as well. Uh, next mutation stuff. So um, if you're looking for a cool way to see into that whole production process of the Playmates toy line. This is definitely the book you need. And like we said, everything was sold out, but you recently started a Kickstarter for uh, the book. So you can get your own copy. And uh, I mean, you're almost uh, at, at, at the end goal. So uh, yeah, we're if a little people want to get it. They, yeah. A little over halfway through and almost there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, there, there's nothing new right now in the book. I think this will just be the way it was, but, uh, if we unlock a couple goals, there might be some extra stuff. Is, is there anything you want to, uh, already un unveil what might be coming up, uh, as an extra in there? Um, so I've got, um, three different possible sections, um, uh discussing on sculpts and a section generally on prototypes which would cover your hard copies first shots put a molds things like that and then a the section on artwork so there and i'm thinking i don't know for sure but like 10 to 15 pages each for bonus these bonus chapters at the end and it's just stuff that either either i found since i had to lock the first printing and couldn't fit in because of time or stuff that i had prior to that that just couldn't fit for space reasons you know uh you know for example you know i've got um there's quite a few sketches in there of some of the um, Jim Lee character packaging designs, uh, but I couldn't fit all the ones I have. So I've got several more of those. So I might throw some of those in there. I've got more concept sketches of characters that were never made that I couldn't fit and I could throw some of those in there. Um, since the book has happened, there's some did some new sculpts that have turned up uh, that would be great for a sculpting chapter. So just things like that. I mean, an easy example is like, the Apollo a page on the book is one page and it shows a couple hard copies, but I actually found like an example of every one of those. So it'd be nice to sort of fill that out and show the rest of them that I couldn't fit into the book. And you know, those are some tough decisions, but when you've got something like Apollo where they all kind of look the same except for their masks yeah. versus, you know, some other line like Forgotten Sewer where they're all radically different, you know, I obviously biased towards things like that rather than putting multiple pages in of things that were fairly similar. So we could get some of those kind of, um, you know, further extensions of some of the things that you've already seen in the book. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, another thing I wanted to ask, how has the reception been of the book, uh, once it got out to the public? 
what, what, what feedback did you get? And did you uncover new stuff? Did any new prototypes turn up or people get triggered like, hey, wait a minute, I have one of those? <laughs> Uh, well, there was, there was, uh, yeah, there was a couple collectors um, that that I knew uh, had had some things from way, way back in the day, and uh, convinced a couple of them to dig a few things out. And just, uh, I don't have really good pictures of them, but at least I know it's, certain things are out there that I didn't know were out there. So there was a little bit of that. You know, I I had a bunch of leads uh, for my original research that I just either hadn't gotten to or people that. I hadn't been able to find that, you know, suddenly I get an email back from or a Facebook so, uh, message from someone I tried to contact two years ago. And, you know, for whatever reason, they just saw it. So things like that happen. Or previous people I had talked to said, hey, I found another box of things. And, you know, or I didn't think I had anything. And here I found a box in my closet. And, to, you know, so things like that happen. Just uh, they have all those connections through all the people that worked on this, you know, random stuff just comes up, even though I'm not sort of doing heavy research anymore for the book, you know, because I had so many contacts, things, things pop up to the surface. So. Yeah. Cause you, you worked on it for like two or three years. Um, yeah. About going three years. To loads of people, like 50 visits or maybe a hundred people involved in, in, in getting all of those collections together. Um, and uh, like the other thing that's cool is that you're actually a, a toy engineer yourself. Right. So you can talk about it from that perspective. Um, yeah, it, it's a really good in because you can talk, sort of talk the language, you know, you get to, it's, it's like anybody that's in your same career, you get together with them, you're like trading, you know, war stories or funny stories from your career and they throw out a term and you know what it means, you know, so it's, it does give an instant rapport to have that background. Okay. Love that shirt that you're wearing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My Indiana Sorry. Jones Raiders. This is in the book, the picture, not the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get a free shirt with the book. But uh, yeah, this is uh, yeah. one of the concepts <laughs> that they did that never went to market, obviously. So uh, I think somebody did commission Scott Hennessy to make them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Matt George. Like based Matt on George's, the art. Right. Matt George, one of my co writers and research helpers. Uh, decided he we, we found those sketches and he loved them so much he's like i want these so he just like well let me go to one of the sculptors who worked on the line and have him make them for me so it seemed like a you know who, who better to go to yeah to, have, indeed. to make those for you than you know one of the guys from the two main houses uh that did all the sculpting work so yeah they turned out really great um did did you like during the whole process uh, of, of, of doing the research, uh, did you see any change in how uh, the toys were manufactured, like in the beginning of the line and then towards the back? Like, did they cut any corners later on or did, did like the, the structure change of, of how things got delivered to the sculptors? Um, were there any noticeable differences? I'd say there's there's two things and is kind of like it went from cheap to expensive and back to cheap. And at the beginning, it was cheap because that first year they didn't have any clue if it was going to be successful or not. So the one instance there I can point to is all the first year packaging and maybe even probably some of the second. If you look at the packaging, you can tell if you, especially if you're an artist, those packagings are done with basically colored pencil and markers and um, inks. And, you know, that <coughs> that has a certain aesthetic to it that you notice. And as you go later in the line, um, you know, certainly by like 90, 90 to 192, you'll see they're starting to do the packaging in acrylics, which is a much brighter, vibrant um, uh, image, but it's also way more expensive. So in those early days, they were trying to like, we don't know if this is gonna be successful. We gotta do this as cheap as possible. So they hired um, a, a design house that was really good with markers and colored pencils and had them do the packaging super fast and cheap. And then as you see the line go on, it gets, you know, gets better and better. But then as you get towards the end, it was winding down. You see things like, um, you know, where they've got one sculpt and they just change the colors of the, like the super mutants line. Like all the turtles are the same, essentially just different colors. Well, that's a cost saving yeah. mechanism, right? Because now you are making one tool instead of four tools. So you start seeing things like that towards the end as cost cutting measures to keep the line going. So, but in the middle there, like 90 to 94, man, it was just like, push everything out you can the, you know i don't think money was really an object in in those middle years when it was booming 
Um, in the later years, they did do all of those mini play sets. Is that something that can be done relatively cheap? Or, I mean, um, there's more engineering yeah, in there's, that, right? Yeah, there's more engineering and the tooling is, you're still going to have probably actually more tooling than an action figure. Because an action figure would be one for the torso, maybe a tool, probably a tool that has all the arms and legs in it. And maybe and another one for the head. So you might have three tools. Um, and, but those mini play sets, they're probably four five or six, you know, eight, 10 tools. So yeah, I think that was just a reaction to what was going on in the market at the time, you know, like micro machines and those kind of things were popular and these little toys. I mean, Star Wars tried it, some other toy lines tried it. And I think for whatever reason, it was at least moderately successful for them. But I don't think that was a financial call necessarily, but. Uh, that's just going off my engineering instinct. I don't have any uh, hard uh, data on that. Yeah, did you like uncover any like playmates in internal uh, records or, or anything like yeah, that during? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. The most interesting one was I found a, sh a sheet that was, um, I think it was 1994 uh, sales projection sheet. So it literally showed. I wish it had been the 1994 like final sales, so we knew how many really sold. Yeah. But at least we can look at it and go, this is what they were thinking they were going to sell that year. And the most interesting thing on it, speaking of my shirt, is it lists the Indiana Jones line on there, which is really surprising because that tells me it got probably maybe farther than the Star Wars one did. Like maybe yeah. they uh, Lucasfilm was you know wanted less of a royalty for indiana jones possibly or maybe they wanted to keep star wars more pure but thought maybe we could let playmates do i don't know the answer but it's really interesting that the indiana jones ones are on there and the star wars ones are not but the other interesting thing about it is it shows four different characters for indiana jones so this is the only sketch i've ever seen who knows if michael dooney has some hidden in his basement or something of the others but you know what would the other four have been you know an april is marion you know, I don't know, a Mikey Sala, you know, uh, Splinter is Indiana Jones's dad. Like, you know, there's a yeah. lot of things it could have been, but it just basically says Indiana Jones, one, two, three, four, or something like that on the sheet. So it just basically shows there would have been four figures, but I, I don't know if we'll ever know what they were thinking. Uh, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. That whole sheet's um, pretty interesting to see what they were, you know, what they were thinking they would sell in quantities that year. So. Yeah. Did you have any any contact over at Playmates itself? Because I, I know you went to the studios, the sculpted it, but um, like, were there still people there that like knew about yeah the the golden ages of of Tim and T toys or yeah? So uh, the main guy, Carl Oronian, who if you watched any of like the documentaries or anything, he's he's on there. Um, he was there from day one. 1987 he was kind of in charge of that line and he took that thing i don't remember when he left he left and went and worked at dreamworks for a little while and they were trying to do some product stuff uh, with their ip and then ended up coming back to playmates so but he was there for most of that if not all of that first vintage line and he's back there today so yeah when i went to visit them a couple years ago at their headquarters in los angeles uh, you know, I got a little tour of the headquarters, sat and talked with him for probably half hour, 45 minutes. There was one other designer that still works there that worked on the on the old line. I forget what year he started. It was somewhere in the early 90s, I think. And then I also got to talk to some of the guys that you know worked on the later lines, too, which was fun just to chat with them. And uh, then my other contact was contacted uh, the Hong Kong office, and they were the ones that were I was asking them. It's like, I really need a picture of an actual steel tool. I want to show this in the book, part of the process i was like do you guys still have the tools and they said yeah we have the tools so um they went out and contacted their factory and said hey pull a couple ninja turtles tools and take some photos so you'll see those photos of the actual steel tools in the book yeah. uh, which is great because like uh, you know they're the only ones that could have provided those probably unless unless i happened to find some like a marketing guy in the u.s that went over there and took some pictures while he was on site but yeah. uh i didn't find anything like that so yeah it was, yeah, it was nice of them to send me those photos one of the strange things is when they re-released the movie turtles now, like the the box with the movie turtles, like Splinter is like the eighty eight Splinter in there, not like the flocked kind. Yeah, they probably didn't want to do the flocking. <laughs> I know yeah, they released okay. that one without flocking as well, but yeah, that was yeah. who knows why they make make that kind of decision. But yeah, yeah. 
That, I wouldn't be surprised if those figures are off the original tools. Would not surprise me at all because I know I know they said a lot of the original tools still exist. So okay, it's probably just like a, a, a giant Indiana Jones <laughs> archive. <laughs> so they're <laughs> they're not turtles. they're not small. The molds are not small. I mean, the store a mold for I mean it's and it weighs a ton. Like kind of literally a ton you know okay. i mean i don't know the exact way to, but it's i mean imagine a giant block of steel it's you know yeah. three foot wide by four foot long by two foot high i mean in two halves that open it's they're massive right um yeah. now you could have smaller things that, for the smaller parts but a lot of times you know especially if they're in the middle of the line where they know they're going to be cranking out you know a ton of these a year they'll do what's called multiple cavity tools so one tool will open up and spit out you know five or six torsos so that tool okay. will obviously be bigger than a tool yeah. that could only spit out one torso. So they'll do that because, you know, basically you put it on the machine and the thing closes and it injects it with, with uh, the plastic and then it opens and the parts fall out. So imagine if you're doing, if you have six pieces in there, you basically yeah. get six pieces out for the same time it would have taken you to do one piece on a, oh, yeah. on a one-up mold. So they can make a lot more, um, a lot more product that way. So I'm guessing some of their molds would have been, you know, multiple cavity okay. and quite heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, i would love to see that happening like they, they never show that type of stuff on discovery channel like how it's made yeah turtle toys. You, can, you can find some you <laughs> you can find some youtube uh videos of injection molding anyway i don't know if maybe specifically toys but you can find some about it yeah go look yeah. injection molding and you'll see some videos of how it all works so uh, um you also run a, a facebook group on turtle protos yeah, yeah. Uh, TMNT have you prototype seen like, page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you seen like a, a rise in, in those numbers of people getting interested in it? Yeah, um, you know, when it started like maybe two years ago, it was, you know, a few hundred people. And I think it's up to, I looked the other day, I think it's up to about 1,500 or 1,600 now. Okay. So um, every once in a while I do a poll just to see, and I think it's about maybe like, 20, 30% of people that are maybe 40 that are like wanting to collect. And the other portion is just like, this stuff's just cool. I'd like to be here and watch <laughs> and see it all. So yeah, you yeah, definitely see some very mix. like cool stuff coming around over there. Like yeah. one guy had like the, the sumo uh, right. turtles a, with like the mold stuff next to yeah, it. Yeah. That was it's a hard copy mold. Thing. So yeah. you, you see that a lot of people think, Oh, that's the mold that makes the toy. That's, that's not the mold that makes the toy. That's a yeah. rubber mold that's um, used to make the hard copies. So yeah, that's that's one we found uh, up in middle of nowhere, California. And um, there's not there's not too many molds, hard copy molds out there because the two major studios both threw all of theirs away. So the very few that have been found have been found with like subcontractors to the two major studios that when they got some overflow work, they they subcontracted out yeah. a few pieces and those guys sometimes kept their molds. So I only know of like maybe three or four or five molds that hard copy molds that still exist. So they're, they're exceedingly rare to see one of those. So that sumo piece is pretty special. Yeah. The mold almost <laughs> more than the wax casting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I keep forgetting my questions cause I get sucked into the story. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so like you said, like that part was found over there. Did, is, is it like really scattered all over? America like these pieces or or are they kind of like um located near those studios that you could find well them? most of it's in Los Angeles area most of the stuff we found was that in and around Los Angeles but but not everything you know because people move I mean we went all over the country I mean there was one trip we literally went from San Diego all the way to Sacramento and had stops all the way through um and me and Matt and my wife were out there for like two weeks and we had one to two to three meetings every single day for two weeks straight. And we started in LA, went down to San Diego, drove all the way up through like Big Sur and and up to San Francisco and out to Sacramento and like just meeting tons of people. But then there's other ones that are like, you know, Pennsylvania or Cincinnati, or there was one south of Atlanta here. I a lady that that had moved away um, years ago and I happened to find her and she's like, Oh yeah, I'm just south of Atlanta. And I'm in Charlotte, so that's like I was going down to Atlanta for something like a month later. I'm like, I'm going to be down your way. So go stop by. So, you know, went down there to, to find some, some interesting things and get some photos. So uh, yeah, it's really been all over the country. 
um, haven't traveled outside of the country for any of this, but just, you know, more of that was contacting um, playmates in Hong Kong and they were gracious enough to send some photos over. So, okay. That's cool. I, I know there's like a couple dudes over here in Belgium that have some prototypes, but they came over from the U S so yeah. uh, they all originate from there. <laughs> um, wait, did get a, a question in, um, Place called Phase. Is it illegal to make money off of custom figures of copywritten characters? I think that would depend on uh, how many you would make and if that would become like your job um, yeah. in the end. But there's Strictly. some really cool customizers out there doing stuff yeah. that ha hasn't been done before. So. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's a it, strictly speaking, yes, it's illegal. The question becomes, at what point are you really going to worry about getting in trouble? I think if you're doing things like, you know, doing, taking a figure and repainting it, uh, taking a figure and, you know, popping the arms and legs off and putting different arms on, I think uh, you're, you're probably in the realm of sort of making your own art, or even if you were to sculpt your own thing. And as long as you're doing like really low runs anyway, selling, you know, 10 or foam or something like 20, you're really going to fly under the radar. Is it technically illegal? Yes, it's technically illegal. So, um, but when you start getting to the point of like making fake scratch figures that are exactly like the original and you're putting them out there and selling them by the dozens or hundreds, that's where you better really watch out because who knows if Playmates wants to come and remake some of those toys and they have the molds and they have the rights to those and um, you know, whether or not somebody going to come after you usually involves, do they think that you're basically inhibiting their ability to make money? So, yeah. Um, yeah. If, if, you know, they want to put out a scratch figure and you're making repros, you know, that could get you in trouble, but I'm not a lawyer. I'll put that right out there. Yeah. <laughs> this is just my understanding of it. Yeah. I could be off base, but I think yeah. technically, but, uh, I mean, there, there, there's, there's a couple ways to do a custom figure. You can like do a repaint and make it kind of your own it's still a turtle and you recognize it as a turtle or you can uh make some of your own stuff like start sculpting or, or going forward on an idea that already existed and uh, right. i know of those those guys that like sculpt their own stuff perhaps based on like an original sketch that never got further uh through a stage or not that we know <laughs> turned into yeah. uh, a toy but uh, i know like they usually do like runs 20 or 25 max and I, I guess like just the cost of painting it and putting the hours in there. Yeah. I mean, it's monetized, but I don't think they make a lot of money on it, unfortunately. This, the other thing to keep in mind is if you're just taking a production figure and repainting it, you're pretty much, I think, clear because Playmates, you already bought that figure. Somebody yeah. bought that figure from them. And at this point, you're just repainting it and selling it on. That's no different than me, you know, you know, pulling out a production figure and now yeah, it was bought back in the 90s for $5 and now it's worth $100 and I'm selling it. It's like, you know, they yeah. that's just me selling a piece that Playmates already took their their piece of the pie, so to speak. So I think repainting a custom a production figure and selling that on, I don't I wouldn't think there'd be any issues at all with that because it was a figure that Playmates already monetized. So, okay. but again, not a lawyer. <laughs> I don't want to get myself <laughs> in any trouble here. <laughs> I, I know of some guys that got into trouble with like trauma um, when they started doing like uh, certain things resembling the toxic Avenger. Um, they got like a season assist, like you can't do this. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it depends. I mean, you, you never want to get into trouble, but uh, there's definitely like some artistry around those customizers mm -hmm. uh, making some really cool stuff and stuff that hasn't happened yet. So. Uh, I'm always up for those. Um, next question, and uh, you know this was going to come. Um, you went out looking for turtles, but did you bump into mm -hmm. any other cool things, perhaps? Oh, of uh, course. I'm always interested in anything that's, like, unproduced or, you know, prototype-driven. Because, I mean, your collection is, is, is pretty huge prototype-wise, right? Yeah, that's pretty much the focus of just about 99% probably is um is prototype well maybe not 99 but 95 anyway but yeah you know obviously talking to the playmates people lots of other playmates stuff came up 
But then also just being largely on the West Coast in Los Angeles, some of these companies did some work for Mattel as well. So there were Mattel things that surfaced, not as much, um, but uh, definitely a few Mattel things here and there. But yeah, a lot of turtle stuff um, that or not, not turtles, Playmates, non-turtle stuff that we also discovered in the course of this. So, I mean, if there was somebody wanted to ever, if there was a market for a giant book on just sort of Playmates, I think it'd be... It'd be fun to do, but I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure that's quite a big enough market that people that care about Earthworm Jim and yeah, you but know, uh, some like of the other lines. Far, Farner was going to do like a book on stuff they created, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, they're working yeah. on that. I'm helping with that, that them with that a little bit, and it's going to be basically like a history of their studios, from what I understand. So, but they're going to include. There's going to be a ton of turtle stuff in there. Yeah, and then they're going to have other things that they worked on as well. So. Uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be a fun book. So, um, did I'm, you uh, like bump into certain unreleased prototypes that was unclear? Like, is this a Toxic Crusader? Is it a <clears throat> gym figure? Is it? Uh, I mean, Darkwing yeah. Duck is kind of like this, like really different. But a couple of those lines are really like. So, <laughs> is this one part yeah, of so that you, or not? You caught me a little bit. So you're saying earlier the book's basically going to be the same, but there are going to be two pages actually that I have to remove from the second printing. Because I later found out that pieces I thought were Ninja Turtles actually were not. Oh, they were okay. actually Toxic Crusader pieces. So um, probably the, the biggest one is the bison figure that yeah. I thought was part of the Wild, Wild West, West line. Yeah. And yeah, the reason I thought that is because when we found it, the box was labeled Turtle. And it was kind of the right year and the, the, you know, the appearance and the... Um, like yeah, the stance like and everything yeah. very much looked like turtles. Um, but then Varner actually found some archives of artwork and some artwork for that figure showed up that showed it was actually a shaman figure considered for toxic crusaders. So that page is actually coming out of the book. I'm going to take it, delete it um, mm -hmm. and fill it in. I'm going to take some of the pages around it and just sort of expand them, uh, make some pictures bigger to, to fill that gap. But um, yeah, there were things like that, that even I thought were, where one line turned out to not be so, um, but not too many of those. Most of them were pretty identifiable. It's like I pretty much know what line this was from, but there was a couple that being probably the, the major one. You also found some Mattel stuff you said. So w w what type of stuff did you bump into? <laughs> well, I got some here if you want to see it. Um, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, here's a figure that is um, uh, unproduced Dumbledore from the Harry Potter okay. line. So I love this. It's just, I mean, one of my favorite Ninja Turtle sculpts is that Wizard Splinter, the spellcaster. Yeah. And this one really evokes that with the flowing beard and the, <laughs> the robes and everything. So I'm like, kind of like, this is kind of a, a cool piece here. So it, it looks then, more badass than I would like think uh, Harry Potter. Dumbledore would look. Yeah, it, yeah. it almost looks more looks more Lord of the Rings Gandalf. To yeah, me. yeah, it really does. But no, it's a Harry <laughs> Potter piece. Um, and then we found some street sharks and some extreme dinos. Ooh. Um, some and some. I don't have this the uh, street shark anymore. But here's a, I have a couple unproduced dinos. So oh, here's man. one here. Uh, this guy. At first, I thought this was this was going to be like they made like a pool cue um street sharks you know yeah. and i thought this was maybe going to be that because of the kind of looks like a pool cue here but uh, i found some pictures from a catalog that it was it was not but this is a you no know, hard copy painted uh, okay so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> yeah so this guy was never made and then i've got um here's a bullseye which this is one of the most beautiful painted hard copies i've ever seen I've I've seen that. Oh man. So good. Even like this is one thing you haven't seen though. Whoa. <laughs> Let's go up and down. Yeah, like, that one know, never got released. The wings yeah. Move. yeah, this one wasn't released, but oh my gosh, the paint job is so great on the the cloak here. Uh -oh. and his chest and all the bandolier stuff going on there. It's just really That's a lot of great, detailing. <laughs> a great hard copy. And then the last one, which was sort of a surprise, is an unproduced figure. So this guy, his name was Ridge. He wasn't in the Whoa. cartoon, but maybe an episode or two, I think. But they were going to make um, 
they were going to make some more. The interesting thing about this is if you look at the cloak here, you'll see there's these red spots and red details all over it. <laughs> yeah. So what the story of that is, that they sculpted the cloak and send it in to Playmates, and they're like, the, oh, unfortunately, these things don't break easy because they're hard copies. But So they yeah. said, um, yeah, we want more detail on that cloak. So the, basically, the, the artist took the hard copy that they had and added wax. So all the red you see is little wax pieces that were added oh, to this okay. thing to give it more detail. You, know, you put some stitching yeah, yeah, on the yeah. side here. So this is Ridge. You said Playmates. You mean oh, I'm sorry, Mattel, Mattel or? Mattel, Mattel, Mattel okay. yes. Yeah. yeah, I misspoke there. I'm so used uh, to talking about Playmates. Just, just, uh, just to be sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it was the same sculpting house that did some stuff yeah. for for uh, Playmates, did uh, some, some things for the Extreme Dinos. Uh, I think so, like Anaglyph. I mean Scott. Anaglyph. Yeah, Anaglyph yeah. was the studio that that uh, yeah. that did some of that. I don't, I don't think Varner did any um, extreme dinos or street sharks. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't seen that pop up in, in there. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and there's some cool you know, Earthworm Jim stuff. You know, they have the little buddies in Earthworm Jim, and a couple yeah. of them weren't made. This was this is a little buddy for a samurai earthworm gym figure. This is the sculpt here. And it's cool. Cause it's got some like, you know, um, real world parts on here, some straws or something. I don't know what that is, but it's black. <laughs> it's not sculpted. So yeah. this would have been the, the little snot, I think is his name that would go with, have gone with this, the samurai gym. And then we've got this guy, which is a character called duo denim that was never made. So I think this would have been like, packed in with something else kind of like bob and number four you know i don't know if you're familiar okay. with the line but uh they had like a little figure and a big figure um yeah i mean like or, peter or the, puppy he also peter came puppy, with, like right. his, his, his little yeah. dude and, and like Ray one, Filet and like those those type of toys also got yeah. one the best one is the hamster nader so this is an unproduced figure this is an original yeah. sculpt the original sculpt i know of this i know at least one hard copy exists and yeah, a painted yeah. one. I, I've seen that in like some catalogs as well. Yeah, there's a painted one in the catalogs. So um, he's got his cape too, but it's pretty fragile. So I tend to yeah. leave it off. But uh, yeah, this was also done. Um, uh, Varner did a lot of Earthworm Jim stuff as well. So that's that's really a great sculpt. I, I like that one a lot. It looks really great. And then um, yeah, Darkwing Duck. You want to get into Darkwing Duck? Oh, I mean... I, I love you Darkwing like Darkwing Duck. Duck? I, I I really do. Yeah. I mean, I it's so hard to find them out here. I only have like the the giant one. Mm -hmm. It's the only one I've ever found. So I do find Tailspin because that's something Playmates also did. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah like same thing like the what is it like Disney Afternoon or, or Saturday Morning yeah. Disney cartoon thing. But right. uh, Darkwing Duck. Oh, love that show. Darkwing <laughs> Duck is yeah. It was. It, I was actually. You're not going to tell me those... you found like part of the second wave, are you? Part. Or... How about most? What? Most of the second wave. <laughs> well, first, let me show you. Um, so, it's one interesting thing I found. We found was some these art boards. Okay. So, um, here is an art board. I. This one is for um. Uh, what's the guy's name? The uh. The electric dude. I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, I know it. Megavolt. Touch, Megavolt. But... Megavolt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I drawing a blank? I love this cartoon. I'm going to miss Megavolt. So um, these are interesting. They just show, you know, some of the different ways. Like this says, you know, plug cap lifts to reveal a semi-transparent head that shows sparks. Push down on battery to lift plug cap and activate sparking unit. So this, it kind of not only has a really nice uh, rendering of the figure, but also talks a little bit about, about what, uh, the uh, features were so i've got a i've got a bunch of those but i'll show a couple of the unproduced ones so here's grizzly so he yeah. was going to basically um you pull the arm up and his mouth drops open okay so <laughs> that was grizzly so that guy wasn't made here's um gander hooter and basically you you lift his arm and his head comes up okay so yeah. see here he'd be like it extends like yeah like et or something <laughs> yeah so um the, the so, first line didn't really have uh like battle action or stuff like that but in the second line they, they were going for that like right adding new action features and then um here's a here's a 
let me take this out of here because it may have a glare. But here's a packaging mock-up. So this is the Quackcopter, which was never released. Whoa. So this is a box mock-up. It's <laughs> it's like um, like the elements are kind of glued on. You can't really tell, but like this right yeah. here is literally a photo that's glued on. So it's another layer. Oh, okay. Um, it looks. I'm not sure. Like even this Darkwing Duck up here is like glued on. The logo is like cut out and glued on. Um, <laughs> so it looks like the art underneath is maybe like a color photocopy that was yeah. pasted onto a box of some other box. I don't know what the other box is. Um, and then all the elements were were pasted on over top to sort of give it um so I haven't found I would love to find a prototype of the quack copter. Oh, yeah. I have not found one, but <laughs> this is as close as I've got this packaging mock up. Well you have the picture of the prototype on the box probably. Or... Yep, yeah the picture yeah the picture of the prototype's right there on the box. You can so see it, it does exist. Well it <laughs> it did exist. It did. Whether it still does. <laughs> who knows? Sometimes these things, you know, they just got chucked in a trash bin and it exists somewhere in a, you know, in a landfill. <laughs> Probably pretty much uh, trash. But then, um, so we'll get into some of the second line. So we'll start here. Um, this is missing the leg. I actually have the feet, but the, the legs are actually, were actually broken. This is Gander Hooter. Yeah. So this is the original <laughs> sculpt. Would have been for him so pretty pretty tame i'll save the best for last so <laughs> we've got the, the, the these are the next few are hard copies here because they're painted here's morgana uh, okay so, these are um, ones we probably saw in in some of the pictures that got very well could uh, be that these were these were cataloged you haven't linked them up to the pictures yet probably not um i'm guessing not because these were found at the sculptors Okay. So generally, um, yeah, those are are left over at you know playmates. These would be, or... Yeah, these would be a second set maybe that the sculpting house did in case playmates asked for another set, um, okay. or they were a set that they made for their own portfolio. But generally speaking, once the hard copies, you know, once the sculpting house was done, the hard copies would go to playmates, and then, uh, for example, these ones would be sent to a photographer. And then either the photographer would end up with them if Playmates didn't want them back or Playmates would get them back. But rarely would they go back to the sculpting house. There'd really be no reason to do that unless they wanted to like repaint them for some reason. Okay. So I'm guessing this was a second set and not the photography set. So we have Morgana. We got Quacker Jack here, which awesome. is a great little figure. Love the sculpt on that guy. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> So this was these were done at a sculpting house in Cincinnati that didn't do a whole lot for Playmates, um, oh. but they did they did the entire Darkwing Duck line. So okay. then we've got one of my favorites, the Liquidator. <laughs> oh, what's weird about this one is if you look at it in the catalog, yeah. you'll see like this tail comes up again and there's a, the fist is on top. And what what the catalog shows is actually this part right here, this bottom yeah. half. Mm -hmm. They took a second one and attached it on the end here to get it to roll up again and then put the, oh, okay. the fist here on the end. So there's like <laughs> it from the catalog, there's a part missing on this piece. But I think this is probably what would have gone to production. I think that catalog yeah. photo is maybe some kind of weird mistake because it looks really bizarre. And this looks way better. And it looks like the sketches I've seen. So mm -hmm. I think somebody accidentally added an extra piece they into that would hard be copy. like a big blister to, to pop that yeah. in, though. Here is um, Negaduck. Oh, he was yeah. missing his hat, so I pulled a hat off a of Darkwing and painted it just to make it look nice. So this hat is just a reproduction that I made to complete the design. Um, uh, it looks good. But, uh, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I so it's catalog, not just like a repaint of Darkwing Duck, right? This is like an old, a no, whole new sculpt a, for Negaduck. It's a new sculpt. Yeah, it's a new sculpt. The Darkwing Duck is very upright standing like the heroic yeah. pose, and he's kind of hunched over. So... Um, yeah, there's there's Negaduck. And then last, but certainly not least, my favorite, Gizmo. Oh. So there's the Gizmo duck toy. This one I don't I don't know that I mean they they obviously made it to hard copy because I think there's pictures in the catalog, but yeah. Um this is the only example I've seen of it out there. Is this this is the original sculpting for Gizmo. I made a little stand for him oh. here to keep him standing because otherwise he'll just roll yeah. right off. So Gizmo Duck. That would have probably so, been one that would have gotten so many paintware. 
yeah. if it and got let released. Me, let me grab one other thing just to show you. <laughs> so because are you guys liking it? My... If you got any questions, leave them in the chat, guys. Uh, <laughs> so literally my favorite What did you piece. get there? Let's, let's take a closer look. That's the original sculpt for Darkwing. So this okay. is the original piece of artwork that all the toys are based off of. It was the only sculpt out of the entire lot of things other than the gizmo that were complete and unbroken. Okay. So everything else I have like sculpt wise is either missing a piece or part of it's broken or something is wrong with it. But the gizmo and the Darkwing are the two <laughs> that were rock solid, perfect. And I was like, if you're gonna pick two to be rock solid perfect, those are the two I would have picked, Gizmo and, and Darkwing. <laughs> so yeah, that's so, I'm gonna actually go put him back where I got him because I don't want him to fall over. Okay, no. that's, that's a pretty, uh, that's a, the waxes are very, very fragile. So you gotta be very, very careful handling them. Uh, you know, you even drop one on the ground, like from where I'm holding it here and drop it to the ground and it would probably break. Oh, I got one more. Uh, here's the Grizz, the, what's it, Grizzly? The grizzly guy. Yeah. Um, so in 3D form, obviously his hands are missing, but uh, you know, this is the, so I, I can't think, I don't think I'm missing, I'm missing any of them. I don't have, a couple of them are complete, but the second series would have been, um, you know, this guy, Grizzly, what's his name again? Why am I trying to, of course, when you get on the spotlight in the camera, Grizzlykoff, that's it. So you got Grizzlykoff, Negaduck, Quackerjack, Morgana, Liquidator, uh, Gander Hooter, and, and Gizmo. So that would have been the second line. So I have at least one representation in 3D of, of all those figures from the second line. <laughs> now so, for yeah, um, Darkwing. For Turtles, they would usually um, have um, the, the vehicles done over in Hong Kong. Um, do you think for Darkwing Doug, they also did it? I or, would guess. Because you found few... that cardboard thing. Uh, yeah, well, the packaging the was all done here. So okay. uh, the packaging design. Um, I found a few vehicle things that were done in the United States. Like uh, we did find a hard copy of the um, mutations. Uh, what is it? It's like the ATV that turns into a jet ski or something. I forget what the name of the, the toy is. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mutiski, yeah. Mutiski, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah we found a hard copy of that that was done here. So it's like there were some vehicle <laughs> things done here, but I don't. I have not seen much evidence that much of the vehicles was done in the United States. I think most of it was done. I, I would always think overseas. like they would do the engineering over in Hong Kong and then bring them over and have like Farner or, or the other one like do sculpting on top of it. Cause they always <laughs> had like, like ooze dripping off of it or would that have been done in, in Hong it Kong? Could have been. Well? I, I, you know, we did find, um, speaking of, of uh, Toxic Crusaders. We found a lot of Toxic Crusader stuff too. I don't think I have any here. Um, uh, but uh, the, we, we found like the, uh, the attack copter from Toxic Crusaders was done in that way. Yeah. They would have, they had a, um, a pattern made that's like in a plastic and that might've been done overseas. I don't know, or it might've been done here, but regardless the one uh, guy that, that I found this piece with, he much like the uh, Ridge uh, extreme dinos where he added wax on yeah. top of, of the styrene yeah. parts. It was the same thing. So there's this piece and I, I have pictures of it. I can send you, if you want to put it on your, your feet or something of oh, yeah. you know, this piece that has all this wax on it, sculpted on it with all the toxic crusader, you know, oozy type garbagey stuff that. Yeah. You know, Cause that I mean, on. that's how I, I would think like it would be the same sculptors doing that. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, moving forward because um, I think like some stuff, I, I don't know if they really changed anything on on the the claw thing that they were, I, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> they, yeah. Like uh, around the movie, Grapp the grappler. Something. Grappler, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. They they also released that for rats. I actually have like that that white and black variant from like the other toy line, but it seemed like it had ooze on it as well. So th they would probably like repurpose that machinery yeah. thing. And, Maybe and, you're. You know, or maybe something that was that sort of minor to the toy, you know, was maybe it was just done in Asia. Um, you okay. know, yeah. it's very possible. I don't know. I, all, yeah. I, all I can tell you for sure is I've seen very little evidence that much of the vehicle stuff was done here. The stuff I have yeah. found for vehicle things has tended to be sort of concept stuff. 
not okay. uh, sculptings or hard copies or prototypes okay. or anything like that. It's very, very, very few uh, vehicle things I've found, unfortunately, because I would love to to have one, you know, in, in my collection, and you don't, you just don't see them. So, okay, I, I got my little daughter here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll let you talk for a little bit, and I'll go see what I can do about this. <laughs> okay, I'll show some. I'll show some other things while you're while you're gone. I got some other things I can plot out of a portfolio here. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, let's we'll do some more. Oops, Darkwing Duck. Here's um, these are some of the uh, produced ones. Here's Honker. So. Uh, You've got him like with the glasses popping off there. So I think they were considering some of these um, action features for the earlier line too. Here's Tusker Nini. So it says uh, Tusker can rear back in an imposing sort of way. So I guess he was supposed to like maybe rear back like that or something. So there's Tusker. Let's see here we've got, uh, this is Goslin. So it says the eyes bug out, pushing arms down, um, something spring me sets spring mechanisms, and then the uh, her eyes were to pop out. So it feels like they were doing some things here that were like similar to like the tune line that ended up happening with the turtles. Uh, here's one uh, for uh, Bushroot. So you pull the tail, and the greenery spouts out of his head. So, that looks uh, awesome. <laughs> here's um, here's a steel beak. The steel beak. So there's a little thing pasted on here with some markups. Um, but yeah, I was saying all these are um, um, had action features. So I think some of them were good. Here's some actually. This is interesting. So these are some drawings for that were going to be a plush line. For okay. Darkwing Duck that never got made. So here's a uh, who. Um, that Hooter, yeah, Hooter. I get Hooter and Gander Honker mixed up because <laughs> they both are with a. Here's Goslin. Uh, yeah. So this is from a plush line. Here's the the best one, of course, the Darkwing Duck. Yeah. <laughs> so these are probably illustrations that maybe would have been painted for a catalog or something. Um, but those came specifically from a lady that told me she was working on a plush line. Here's a launch pad. Awesome. So, and while I got it here, since I've got this folder all open, um, oh, I forgot about these. Oh, yeah, I got to show you these. I forgot these were in here. All kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so here's some more Darkwing stuff. You got me on a Darkwing kick. So here's some packaging <laughs> design sketches. Uh, so um, it's cool. You can see that they've got the... The little layers for each yeah, the thing layers. that would go on. Here's the, uh, uh, the, the background. You know, the iconic bridge that he yeah. slides down <laughs> on the bike, right? So there's that. Here's uh, This is, I think, for uh, the um, role play. Yeah. Um, then we've got the sketch for the gas gun. So this is all package design stuff. Yeah. And here's some original artwork. So this is final artwork. I, I'm trying to remember where this was used, but so this is final pencils. Yeah. Okay. So really awesome darkling <laughs> final pencils. <laughs> I'm like so stoked to get these. And then here's I love this one. I don't I don't think this was used anywhere. Uh, uh, but uh, he's smashing against the wall. I mean, maybe it was on a packaging. I'm I, I'm forgetting, but uh, yeah. So yeah, some more darkling stuff. Also, just because I happen to have this folder open, here's also the. Um, this is original pencils for the uh, sewer sword. Oh, crazy okay. So this is the original yeah. pencil artwork. And then we've got um, a hand colored, where is it? Right here. This one? No. I'm trying to find the right things. In here, this one. Here we go. So this is a hand colored, it basically photocopied the artwork, but you can tell it's, it's hand colored because it's all got bleed through into the paper. So this is so like- So was um, this done by like the the company that could could do it like relatively cheap and fast? 
this type um, of artwork or this this is like a con a, a comp they call it like a, a okay. composition study so this was mm -hmm. like working out the colors and here's what we want it to be because obviously the artwork is is way bigger than that right the artwork is yeah. this wide so he, he just scaled it down and painted it up to say this is what the colors are supposed to look like and if you recall on the packaging actually the sword in the packaging is actually a photo of the real sword yeah with mm -hmm. the cartoony um parts yeah overlaid um, and then here is the actual final artwork. So this is the final artwork for the piece. Okay. And you can see here, the sword's gone now, right? That's yeah. because that gap was where the photo was laid in. <laughs> but this is the final pencils um, for that artwork. So oh, yeah. pretty cool. So this is some stuff we found after the book. Um, <laughs> you know, all, all this sword this sword stuff here and this Darkwing stuff uh, was found. A lot of it at the same place. Um, a couple, not the sculpts. I mean the the two D packaging stuff. So yeah, that's some some interesting. So this is one thing I was going to put in the artwork section if we get to that part of the book. Oh yeah, the, the sewer sword um, artwork. Uh, yeah, I, I seem there, to so. recall you saying like I've got so much sketches and stuff. Like it, it would be a whole new coffee table book. It could be. Um, could is be. Is that yeah. something that's still on your mind or? It is. I. Uh, it's. it's it's not at the forefront right now because I'm just getting through. I want to get rad plastic finished, right? I want to get the second printing oh, yeah. done. And once mm -hmm. the second printing is done, I, I don't know if I'll do any more printings after that. I'm going to print some extras. So um, it's certainly mm -hmm. going to fund and I'll print some extras. Uh, so I'll have them for a little while. I've got a couple shows I'm doing um, in the near future. I'm going to be at the Greenville, South Carolina uh, show. I think it's in November um, and can do some signings there. And then I'm planning to be at the, the Nashville, ICCC convention um, next year. I think that's in March or May. I can't remember. I think I think it's in May. Um, and doing a panel there on Ninja Turtles prototypes and things. And I'll be have a booth there too, selling some books. So you know, we'll be making extras. But be better if you got on the Kickstarter because that's the way. You, a, you guarantee you get one. And B, you know, it helps me. The more the more Kickstarter orders I get, the more additional copies that I can print. So. Um, I'm planning on using pretty much those funds to, to uh, fund that Kickstarter, yeah. or to fund extra extra book printing. So, okay, yeah, I mean it's almost happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you haven't got your copy yet, you you can still uh, uh, get in on this Kickstarter for for the next fourteen days. So yeah, ends ends. I think the Sunday, the first Sunday in August. I took it through the weekend. So and I mean, I've, I've read it already. I can definitely um, vouch. This is one heck of a cool book to own if you're a turtle you've actually, collector. You've actually read the whole thing, like all the words you've read, or just uh, click yeah. through it. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I think a lot I, of people, I, and I, I don't mind. I flipped through it so around. so often, but um, yeah, I remember um the first time we did like an interview, I was like, I have to like read everything, and because we were talking about the bottle rocket uh vehicle. Right. Uh, the soda pop thing. Uh, right. I was like, yeah, I mean, if he pulls out something and I don't know about it, like, <laughs> what I kind of an interview would probably I be? <laughs> most people don't read through the entire thing. And I'm totally cool with that. So I was just, I was like, yeah, but I mean, if you're going to gonna read, read some of it, uh, definitely read the first 20 pages about just how the sculpting is done, the whole process. That's one of the yeah. things that um, I had been looking to find out, like, how is this done? And you definitely captured that. So, yeah, the first yeah. two chapters, sections of the book, are really worth reading. The rest of it is sort of commentary on the things you're seeing photos of, which has some interesting stuff sometimes. But really, the the photographs are really what your what the highlight is there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, the art of yeah, that's that's how, right. you, how you're saying it before as well. Uh, got a super chat in from Edwin uh, from Singapore. <laughs> um thanks thanks guys for taking your time and he's got a question is there anything you wish to put in the book that you had no info on um anything you were searching after that you still haven't found chris yeah there were a couple lines that i found nothing for which kind of bugged my ocd brain <laughs> like the sewer tubes we actually found a couple sketches for them after the book went to print so it would have been great to have that in there but i have nothing in the sewer tubes in the book um, what were the other two? I had nothing on the talking turtles in the book, which iron it was very ironic. Uh, one of my um, uh, 
guys that help with the book doing the research, Stephen Ward and, and Matt George both live in moving. So Stephen's like, I'm going to go over to your house and get some of these boxes of stuff that we had uh, from some of these guys and uh, started looking through it and found a, a hand built styrene prototype for the talking talk box for the talking turtles. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was sitting in a box there all along. I could have had a talking turtle page in the book, but we didn't find it. It was just at the bottom of a box that, you know, we. I don't know. It got lost. Yeah, and then you still envelope. have to be able to I identify it, you know? Like, yeah. So um, um, it's like those two is like we found stuff later that could have filled those out. And I'm trying to think of what the third one is. There was only three sublines I missed that I found nothing for. Um, I can't. Is the sewer tubes and the talking turtles. And there was one more. And I can't remember what. Anyway, that would have been one I would also, whatever that third one is. I would have loved to have found some stuff for that. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was though, but you know, but all kinds of things that we found um, file photography for, but no actual physical thing existed. Okay. I mean, like the yeah. sewer dragster we were talking about, a lot of the pictures in, in the book of the vehicle prototypes were just from file photography. So I don't know that any of those exist anymore. Those photographs were taken in Asia at the factory there when I think they were making those prototypes over there. And so who knows what happened to them? Probably gone forever. I'm very glad we have photographs, but would have loved to have found some of those. Yeah. Uh, Marco uh, maybe got in a little later, but uh, how did you get the prototypes of those figures? Um, is what the question was. Yeah, it's, you know, research for the book. It was just, um, you find some people, you call them up, you email, find emails, you just research, research, research. I mean, it's, it's like detective work, honestly. I mean, trying to... to find people. I mean, the first thing is to like find a name, you know, uh, of somebody. Yeah. And once you find the name, now you have to find, well, where are they? Like, how do I contact yeah. them? How do I get them to <laughs> email me back? You know, like, how do I not come weird, across as some creepy guy? guy like, Hey, exactly. this thing you did 40 years ago, I, I want to talk to you exactly. about it. <laughs> so, you know, that can be difficult. Some people are totally open to it. Some people are very hard to get a hold of. And then, you know, but once you start talking to one, they like, well, who else did you work with? They give you a couple names and, oh, did you contact this, this studio did some of this kind of work? It, the guy there was this, this guy's name and you try to find him and then they tell. I think we lost uh, Chris here. Um, not sure how, how that happened. Maybe it'll pop in. Um, again, let's see what, what else we, we got over here. Um, skull phase, the picture of the turtle, pitch turtle. <laughs> I think you, you went away there. <laughs> yeah. My, my phone is down to 10% battery, but I know we're oh, okay. almost at our hour anyway. So I was ignoring it. Yeah. It yeah. We got three more. And it went into we get, like we got low two more minutes mode. to go. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Skull face was just saying about the picture of the pitch turtle warms my heart, but you have an actual pitch turtle right behind you, yeah, right? Right here, yeah. <laughs> it's not so, a picture, skull face. <laughs> here he is, yeah. One of I think I one of three I know I know to exist that are painted. Quite a few unpainted ones I know are out there. And um, is that the original bow staff that he came with? No, no. I a, this is just yeah. it was it didn't have that, so I just made that. I actually had a friend of mine. Uh, made that make that to uh, just make it look right, but yeah, that's not the original bow staff. But Looks other than awesome. that, he's he's all legit. There was a break on the toe that the sculptor insisted he fixed, and he fixed that. So, but other than that, oh, it's exactly, he actually like has it. like like a little tail because like yeah, the first the turtles tail. didn't have one, right? Yes, there they did away go. with that for obvious yeah. reasons, as you'll see in this particular <laughs> silhouette. That's that was awesome. actually a point of discussion. That was really, like, really <laughs> talked about that. Like, we think, I think we need to get rid of the tail. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh, that's pretty, that's a pretty great piece. That's maybe, that's maybe the highlight of the Ninja Turtles, but I don't know. I've got some other interesting things too. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, it's always, extremely fun talking to you um chris is always like uh one of the guys i i had i just text immediately like i want to do a, an episode on this you always have some info on it so it's it's uh great um i want to thank you so much for uh joining me today for this interview and showing yeah, off all these amazing things um yeah once again i just like to point out the kickstarter link is in the comments below uh, in the description as well. And if you just type in Kickstarter wrap plastic, it'll lead you right through it, uh, to it. 
not true it. <laughs> you can also um, go to yeah. ratplastic.com and, and click on link link there to get it. So Okay. And you also have t shirts and other stuff. Yeah, there's some t shirts uh, and now, stickers right? and a rad plastic pillow. It's like yeah, some other stuff merchandise on there if you're interested in that. The the one everybody likes is the uh, mashup of the mystery van with the turtle yeah. turtle van. It says rad plastic. <laughs> it's a pretty it's a pretty great design chance did. So uh, I dig that one. Awesome. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, this is going to be the stream. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, you can follow Chris on Instagram as well. He posts a couple of prototypes uh, every once in a while. Uh, I'm not sure what your uh, what your Instagram name Chris, is again. Chris.Fawcett. Yeah. Chris and, also, yeah, and also check out the TMNT Prototype Collectors page on Facebook. We're always looking for new members there if you want to see more stuff like this or if you're interested in even getting into collecting stuff like this. There's always people yeah. posting things for sale and and stuff like that on that group. So, all right. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you. Thanks everybody in the live chat and everybody watching this a little bit later on for joining us today. And we'll see you in the next video. See you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>